Hi, everyone. So here is Moonlight Soul and my co-host Marisa from Growing the Flow. And we are going to be talking about the upcoming Aries total eclipse. So let's get ready. Ooh, it's a big one. We've got a lot to talk about. And as you were just saying, Mercury retrograde is in the house. So <laughs> we've, we've gathered all of our thoughts and we're here to share. But, you know, anything's possible with the trickster. So... <laughs> Exactly. So keep in mind, if there is any interruption, it's not on purpose. It's Mercury retrograde and it's still only day three. So it's still in a full blow. So yeah, here we are. Yeah, but significant energies for sure. We can feel it coming in and uh, a lot to unpack. So yeah, I can literally feel like this boiling, <laughs> boiling uh -huh. it's coming to the boiling point. Like there is definitely some kind of intensity that's um, escalating. Yes. But like we were saying, you know, uh, we're kind of taking the angle of, since we just mentioned April fools, you know, we're looking at it like the fool in the tarot coming in here open and sort of ready to uh, have this adventure that we're stepping into and um, sort of a, a new beginning, a uh, clean slate, purity, energy sort of coming in to clear the way. So um, as you pointed out, this is episode 19, so it's bringing us into the frequency of 10, which is also one, which is endings and new beginnings. So here we are. And it's the zero. So we're starting from the scratch and we can choose whatever we want it to be. And that's, again, the fool and the magician. You can create whatever you want. And as we previously mentioned in our previous video with the lunar eclipse, um, Mars is now in a sign of Pisces. So we are co-creating with the spirit. Yeah, and working to sort of bring it down into material form, but we may not be there yet. So that's kind of where, especially with, you know, Mercury retrograde now, we're sort of in this pause and, you know, some of the energies that I've been seeing came up in our collective cards this week, the hanged man, right? This energy of suspension, like being suspended or held up or in some way uh, on pause. And it's in a way that can be, you know, uh, annoying to say the least, you know, especially when it's not what we want or, you know, we're moving in a particular direction because we could be feeling inspired or having some of that creativity, but we're best served to sort of explore that before we're actually bringing it into a material at this point. And so that's where I've been seeing a lot of the guidance coming in about this, again, exploration and just allowing us to kind of gather what all is being downloaded at this time. And as we go through this eclipse, and then in the residual weeks following, really looking to implement that. And I guess that's why we have Mercury retrograde in Aries. So we're reevaluating everything. We're going over because Mars is the rule of Mercury in Aries and of course of the eclipse and everything else that's going to be happening in Aries because today we're recording this on April 3rd. Tomorrow on 4-4, we have Venus moving into the sign of Aries. And she will be there for the for the almost entire month, technically. And also tomorrow on 4-4, we have the Sun-North Node conjunction. So this eclipse is actually a very different energy from the previous eclipses, apart from the fact that the last three eclipses we experienced, the, the Libra one now, and also the two in fall were all ruled by Venus. Because we had the solar eclipse in Libra in October, then we had the lunar eclipse in Taurus at the end of October, now lunar eclipse in Libra, all ruled by Venus. So now Mars is being in charge um, and uh, Mars is ruling everything in Aries. And tomorrow on 4-4 portal, which is a portal, and it's interesting because 4-4 adds up to number eight and we are in a year eight. So that's again like 8-8. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this uh, conjunction of Sun and the North Node will make this eclipse to happen in a new phase. So all mm -hmm. the previous eclipses we had were in a closing phase, and now this one is in a new phase. So we can see how, uh, apart from the fact that we are in an Aries season and things are being reborn, this is a very, very different energy. Mm -hmm. So it's really happening, the new beginnings. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. And it's definitely, you know, even just from... Um... Uh, perspective of just the fact that this is kind of a phenomenon in our lifetime that's happening and it's happening everywhere, not just those of us who are in the path of totality, but it's happening to the whole planet, right? So we're all experiencing it as always, but just depending on where you are 
not just in the world, but also there's people that are like, oh, what? there's an eclipse. I heard there's something. What's going on? What do you do? Do you get glasses? What do you don't look at the sun? You know, all that. And it's just funny because no one is exempt, right? We're all experiencing this transformative energy. And, you know, it remains to be seen exactly how that all unfolds. But um, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, and it's interesting that both you and I are actually in a place where we'll have the visibility because I'm in Mexico and it's going to be pretty seen here in Puerto Vallarta. So uh, I had never been in a place where the eclipse was visible because usually in the center of Europe, that's not quite the case. But yeah, it's interesting how it worked out that you, you and I are having this conversation today and we are both in a places where we will see it in a few yeah, days time. Cool. I'm, I'm in Pennsylvania and there's only um, one area that has the 100% totality. I'm in... Uh, I think it's 90.1%. And the last time that there was that much uh, uh, totality in this area was in the 1400s. So before Philadelphia was even a city, which is just pretty amazing to me to think about the fact that it really is a significant you know, uh, event to behold. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited and it won't happen again uh, in my area until 2079. So I'll be 99. So I'm going to be here for it now so that I can, I can send a love letter to my future self, my 99 year old me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just, and that's awesome that you're, you're in a hundred percent. I'm excited to have someone I know as a firsthand account. Well, I don't know, uh, you know, how excited I am about it, but it's happening, you know, I'm, I'm sure there is a purpose and reason for everything and including me being here during the time of the eclipse that's going to be happening, you know, like right here by my head. So, yeah, we just, we just go with it. We just go with the flow. And I mean, with uh, the other astrological stuff, you know, like with the Mars obviously being the ruler, impacting the eclipse, uh, Mars is going to conjunct Saturn two days later. And as many people are aware, then we be heading up towards this exact conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, but it's already active. So this is all influencing this eclipse that we have on April 8th. And uh, yeah, you know, we just see where it takes us. And so would you say then, because I know like when I was touching on that with um, those aspects about like uh, natural events and things like earthquakes and tsunamis and things happening like being that this energy is already active like we are in real time seeing those things happen in the world that that's all a part of it you know that that's already that influence is already coming in you know even though that doesn't happen until later in the month well the uranus i mean traditionally it drills earthquakes because it's like the expect the unexpected and of course uranus being in taurus Taurus is gaia it's earth is nature so from the traditional perspective uh that is unfortunately in alignment with the energies but i i because you know as um, now i'm practicing evolutionary astrology i'm looking at it like the earth is trying to shake us up like wake mm -hmm. up you know like there is something going on you can't see uh, and with the mars uh, energy being you know in in pisces uh it's to do like we need to see the things like hangman we need to see the different perspective we need to understand the deeper meaning so uh it's it's not lost on me all these um connections between astrology between tarot between uh what's happening in the world in the everyday reality on a global scale what's happening in our lives and we are all being shaken out of our dream state or our reverie to look at things differently and uh, to see the deeper meaning behind things and what actually does hold the meaning. So there is definitely a lot of that at play at the moment. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, bringing all of that in here, I guess we should get some of our cards going so we can see we've got a couple of decks put aside and we put a lot of thought into it, right? To be guided. So of course we like to bring in queen of the moon first um, to set the tone for any lunation. And this is the very first card that's going to be pulled for this lunation because neither you or I made our videos yet. That's <laughs> right. You heard, here first. you heard it here first. Stars yes. and colors. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what is coming forward here. I'm very curious. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's popping up. So we'll take that. Ah, yes. Aries is saying step aside. Oh. Step aside. 
outside <laughs> Venus the masculine. The masculine energy is here so we have the energy of masculine card 42 and the lunar god is what the uh the subscript here says so definitely bringing in this action fire i see some lightning there in the distance um, but you know what's interesting? I did not notice this about this card right away. Did you ever notice the two that are in the distance there? Two figures. See? Yeah. I hadn't noticed that right away about this card. But I feel mm. like lately, and even last time we met, the inner child energy has been coming up a lot. And even this week, um, Six of Cups is on the altar, which is the card of nostalgia and reflection, um, innocence, again, um, simpler times and such. And um, it's come up for a number of people now as I'm currently diving into the um, empowerment pack sessions for April. And I feel like this fire, this action, this what's being shook up is definitely bringing to the surface a lot of these things, like just the two children holding hands and, and they appear to be a boy and a girl. It's just giving me that energy of this, um, some things that are coming forward to be cleared. And that's going to be through act, the action of the act of um, seeing them, acknowledging them. And then it's a clearance. Like we're either clearing it out, integrating, or again, seeing it from these new perspectives, these aha moments. That's something that maybe we've seen a particular way for a very long time stories. We've had of these memories or these circumstances or whatever they are that are coming up. Um, there's some flash of, of insight or something that comes in to see it from a, a totally different and healing um, perspective. So that's telling me about Chiron too. I feel that connection that's coming in um, about these wounds, but there's this strength in what's coming in that we can, there's an action happening of actually some movement, some shifting and changing coming in. And that's interesting with the Chiron because actually Chiron uh, and Mercury are going to have their second conjunction because Mercury is now retrograde uh, a week after the eclipse on uh, April 15th and it's going to be on the same degree. Not the same minute, but it's going to be on the same degree, on 19, 19 degrees, just like uh, the eclipses. Uh, and uh, as I probably previously mentioned, Mercury and Chiron are conjuncting three times and each time they're having conjunction, Mars is in a different sign. The first time they made conjunction was while Mars was in Aquarius. Now it, Mars is in Pisces. And the last time they're going to conjunct uh, at the beginning of May, I think it's two days before the new moon in Taurus, uh, Mars will be in its rulership in Aries. And actually Venus will be also in her rulership in Taurus. So there is a definitely a lot of this um, nostalgia. Or well, The first thing that came to me with this card was because you know of this god, masculine force, and until this point, many people can agree that we have been living in a world created by men for men, you know, patriarchal society and the rest of it. And now we see the totality of what 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 is there, what is manifested. And of course, we were all co-creating it. We were all participating consciously or subconsciously. But um, because also of the cards that have been coming up for me and uh, the energy I've been tuning in is absolutely essential for the feminine energy. I don't mean as a sex, female. I mean, the feminine energy, which is the energy of the receptivity, intuition, you know, and uh, all that, you know, the, the, uh, the, the emotional aspect of our being that is absolutely essential for it to come in because with this man, you know, and I mean, he doesn't look exactly like friendly. It's like, well, this is what's been money because I can also behind him is the all the cycles of the moon, you know, is the crescent gibbous, all of it. So what this man represents to me is that we now have the opportunity to look at the totality of the manifestation of what this energy of this predominantly masculine energy created and it, there is nothing wrong with masculine energy but there has to be a balance because at the moment as you and i've been talking a lot recently there is so much imbalance and disharmony and disconnection where uh there is not that much emotion involved it's all just in the head and in the ego and i know you're wrong because you're different or you think different or you feel different and we don't look at the um, human aspect of it that you still a, a, a man or a woman or a child and in essence, we are all part of the same collective consciousness. So this is kind of what came to me, but the Chiron definitely, yeah. The Mercury Chiron triple conjunction with Mars being ruler in a different sign. So make us look at it from different angle because the ruler always influences it. Yeah. 
for sure. And maybe the way that it was coming in for me was that it is this reminiscing and going back over how we got here, which mm. to me, I mean, because I see the children that made me think of the inner child. And I always just connect that with the, the wounded healer and Chiron and, you know, all that energy. But it makes perfect sense when you explain it and add in, you know, your first hits, because in order for us to create this new, we do have to reevaluate and look back over, you know, how we got here. And that includes allowing all of it to come up. And, you know, what you were just saying about, you know, moving from the head to the heart, you know, that's reflected in this eight energy of this year and the tarot with the strength card, which is a masculine energy. It's Leo, it's the sun, it's the strength card, but it also has very feminine energy as well in its traditional depiction with the woman and the beast, whether it be a lion or something that there's this taming the beast within. But it's to your point that like, we're not talking about gender. We're not talking about there's a man who's somebody who's presenting as a man versus a, a female. We're talking about the balancing of those two aspects within all things, all people, all aspects of you know so that's big but it's that's what we're talking about is really bringing this into recalibrating but in order to do that we're going back over but ultimately that's happening by by creating a bridge is another thing that's been coming up for me like this bridge because we're in sort of this corridor between eclipses and we're stepping out you know through this and there's this bridge between you know we're no longer where we once were we're not yet where we are going to be we're in this in between, but there's the bridge between, you know, and the, and it's funny because even just the way that that's, it almost yeah. looks like they're attached on either side of these, yeah. you know, what he has there, but I, I don't know, but it still just feels like this continuum, you know, this continuum that we may be finding things from the past are coming back up in order to glean these new awarenesses that we will then take forward with us. And I was just thinking because of the bridge that actually the number of the eclipse is up to number 11 because it's 8, 4, that's 12, number 3, and we are in the year 8, which is number 11, and mm. that's number 2. So it is the connection, it is the polarity, it is to me like, you know, the 11, if you put them lying down, it is like a bridge. Yeah, you know? or even so, how he's holding these two rods on Yeah, it's 11, right? So it's all the phases and all that has gone in between from here to here, you know, the, but yeah. And so, and you do, when you're in the hanged man, that's getting flipped over. So yeah, whether it's parallel in either direction. So it's definitely, you know, an impression of the, this energy that we have coming in here. And those, like I said, the lightning bolts are definitely showing like the power and the illumination that's coming in with it, you know, a, as it can be surprising or something unexpected for sure. So that's all, you know, par for the course as well. I mean, just the fact that we are in the month four, even if we don't look at the eclipse itself, but, you know, like I know this is something that stand up for you in all the uh, resources we've been listening to that people referring to this month as is the number three. And I'm like, how is it number three is number four? But because of the year eight and the four and it's 12, 12, which is the hangman card, right? And then it comes to number three. And three is all about Jupiter, which is about learning and expansion. So what are we learning here in order for us to be able to grow and expand? And for that, we need to look at things upside down we cannot just look at them at what we see at the face value because the ego is the archive of the past when we look at it just engaging our brain we will we will only see what we already knew <laughs> because mm -hmm. in order for us to go into the future we need to engage the higher mind the, the higher self the heart so yeah this card again you know we can just go for hours trying to decipher one one picture but uh, yeah i think that you know we've got the energy here we definitely have that energy here sort of setting the tone and then we'll bring in our tarot influence to go with so we're going to do as i say there's the strength card right on the bottom like i said masculine so other decks it is depicted as a woman but again it's 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 all about yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that was on the bottom. Psychic tarot is what we're using for this one. Well, right? I'll be definitely cracking if the thing man came up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what comes forward. So I think we'll start with our three cards because we have another deck we chose for a little bonus. So let's see. 
to know here as we step into solar eclipse. Cool. <laughs> shadow as well. Shadow, we talked about that before we came on too. That's too funny. So we've got the moon coming in, major energy coming in with the moon. And let's see what else. Oh, yeah. here eight of swords this is a family of flyer too yeah we've definitely seen that one Ooh, let's see the light coming across from one card to the next and then finally ah the, oh, cool. the star so we have the moon and the star wow look at that okay so 18 8 and 17 which is eight yes 17 is another eight <laughs> it is wow okay so the moon well that's what we're here talking about is and yeah i'm definitely feeling this energy of sun and moon on each corner here of the cards and feeling this coming together face this face off that's happening here right and so we were talking about that earlier about the dark night of the soul energy or the midnight indigo because i was talking about some of the um healing energy sprays that i would bring in here and this energy of you know the dark and the shadow being illuminated and knowing that you know we're we're talking about a lunation we're talking about this major um, coming together and it's just literally depicted on this card between the two and there's a mirror reflection that's happening there too yeah and i think just like if we just look at all the cards together it's quite clear message again about what the universe is trying to say and uh, for a lot of people they are afraid because a lot of our shadow it's coming out because when we feel the threat of survival you know when our survival is threatened in any way what comes out is the shadow because it's the lack of faith. It's the lack of connection to the higher self, to spirit. You know, when we don't trust, all we see is just this, oh my God, how am I going to survive? What are we going to do? Like there's all this stuff happening, all this fear and stuff because it's outside of our control because the ego keeps us safe by trying to control, by trying to predict, but it's only going from what already happened. So that like, you know, just like all of them, that's obviously ties up very nicely to the to the Eight of Swords as well. But there is a lot of shadow coming up and also because it is a new moon. So just before we have the new moon, the moon is in void, right? When it's completely dark. And this is a new moon's total solar eclipse. It's the only total eclipse, I believe, for the entire year. I don't think e either of the ones in fall are total and the one before wasn't total. So this is the solar total solar eclipse in Aries and we'll have one more next year, but there will be no more lunar eclipse in Aries as we already spoken of. So there is a lot of insecurity and fear because we don't know where this is going, where this is heading, where this is taking us. And this is why so much shadow, it's coming out to the surface because now is the opportunity to look at it and to heal it, to 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 uh, be able to face our fears. Why are we afraid? Like, why are we afraid? You know, like we understand we are afraid, but why are we afraid? What are we thinking is going to happen? Because again, we are not afraid of the no unknown. We are afraid of what already happened because we cannot be afraid of what we don't know what it is. We are afraid of projection of the past into the future. So, yeah. yeah. It just thundered here as you were saying that, which is unusual. Like, oh, wow. here, but I just was like, is that thunder? Yes. Wow. Okay. The <laughs> yes, there's this there's a storm that's brewing, right? And that we're moving through, which again, even thinking about that, it's funny. I've got so many things coming in that uh like when we talk about what we're afraid of and that it's the past and even just thinking of that example and bringing back the inner child and fear of thunderstorms or different things that it's so scary. And then we would make up a story like, oh, the angels are bowling. That's something we used to say, oh, the angels are bowling and they must have just got a strike. That was a loud thunderbolt, you know, like, and so you make up these stories to be able to feel safe or to have that. And so this card is feeling like, again, this this perspective that we've held onto that things look a certain way 
or that, you know, we've seen them a certain way, but there's this wider landscape to be seen. So there, it's trapped in fear and prisons of our own making because they're limited by not allowing ourselves to fully look at things and question or really let's pull this apart and dig into it because we're safe to do so. You know, or you're safe to question or just to consider or to allow yourself to see different perspectives. And so, you know, all these energies that we're talking about coming in, like the hangman didn't come up here, but it's an energy that's been influencing us. It's saying when you get stuck or hung up or something doesn't go the way that you wanted it to, from one vantage point, it's ugh, you know, it's a bummer. It's inconvenient at, at the least, let alone, you know, bigger things that can really, really hang us up. But it's in that stuckness that this awareness can come in. So even here, it, I'm feeling stuck. I'm feeling limited. I'm feeling in some way um, restricted. But there is this illumination coming in that I can't see because I'm I'm allowing myself to stay in this limited perspective. So there's this energy of opening up and allowing this to come in with really no expectations. Again, it's the full energy of just being open and willing to receive what's coming in because there's an understanding that ultimately this is the card of wishes, of hope, of renewal. This is the card that comes after the tower in the tarot. Yeah. And the tower is the card of absolute disruption and sudden, you know, events and things coming, lightning, you know, striking and bringing something down and dismantling things. And yet on the other side of it is the star, is the hope and the renewal and the understanding that there sometimes is a necessary crumbling or a necessary um, need to allow things that no longer serve to fall away, which, you know, just brings us full circle here to, you know, things that are out of balance needing to be balanced. And that's, you know, what we're moving through at this time. Yeah, because it's 42, which is the six, the masculine, mm -hmm. the first card, it's six, which is the card of, which is the number of balance. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, when, I mean, I, I don't know if you can see the way I can see it, but you can see that from the center card, just like you already mentioned that the light is spilling into that man's robe, you know, but then in the last card, you literally, you have the person that, you know, you literally imagine that actually the being that holds the light is not on the ground. It's, you know, because we don't, we don't even know if that being is actually standing on the ground. It's like suspended. You don't see the feet. So it's like, imagine there could be just like an angel offering the light, your your higher self or your spirit guides, whatever, and saying, don't worry, there is a light. There is, you know, like there is a purpose to this madness. Like, you know, with the star is a card of Aquarius. It's a, the hopes and wishes for the future. It's the, um, it's the evolution. Is that we're going beyond. We're going beyond everywhere you've ever been. And, you know, like if, um, for example, imagine you're playing a game or you watch, uh, even better, you're watching a TV series and you know that there is a next season coming out. You don't go, oh my God, what's going to be in that season? <gasps> you know, we all going to go excited. Like, oh, you know, I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen. What is in that season? You know, I, like, you know, but we know there's going to be a mixed bag of everything. It's going to be some good stuff, some challenging stuff, you know, whatever. And this is literally what it is. You know, so this being is offering you the, the, the hope, you know, is giving you the light. You know, that person there, like on the floor, can't see, like, oh, my God, it's all doom and, doom and gloom. All I can see is this, uh, I can hear these thoughts, you know, these thoughts, these nagging voices in my head. They're saying, like, look at that. There is a war. There is an earthquake. There is a shooting. There is this. It's a, that, that's it. It's done. It's done. And we can't see this being, you know, like, but this all holds a meaning, you know, like, and be like, well, well what is the meaning to that? There is no meaning. It's just going to lead to another disaster right but actually no there is this new season coming up for humanity which yes it's got some challenges in it too but it's like uh you know the higher selves of us here in these avatars are excited because it's saying well finally there is some change coming and it's coming with this aries new moon solar eclipse for sure so um you know it's like on uh, being us here on the ground level on earth we only see what we see with the human eyes. We see what we see, we hear what we hear. It's scary stuff, you know, like, hmm, you know, it's all this unknown. And the thing we know is the totality of manifestation of this first card, you know, of this patriarchal society. And this is where we are at, you know, this is what we can see. So with the light, it's like we, we, we need to be able to connect with the light. Again, it's this Mars in Pisces, you know, the ruler. 
is that we need to go beyond. We need to connect back to the source, to the intuition, because when we feel this disconnection and feel we are all alone, I am just this label and this identity and this avatar, then yeah, then we only perceive reality from that one dimension. But there is so much more. There is so much more because the physical manifestation of reality is like the, the smallest percentage that actually with our physical eyes, what we can see and perceive uh, as, a, as a life, which, which is great because this is what we came here to do as humans, right? Uh, but it's it's the, uh, it's like I think 5% or something even less than that of all there is. It's like small percentage. Yeah. It's, it. I just keep thinking like, as you're saying that, that this is like, you know, we got you, like you're, you're held, like, even though it feels, and this is, again, is going full circle to some of these, you know, insights that have been coming in through these inner child connections too, is that like fears and worries and perceptions that you had previously as a child or like a child or thinking of ourself with the limited perspective of like a child who rationalizes things like, oh, you know, the angels are bowling that actually, you know, when we look more widely and deeper into it, it, it's a feeling of being either alone or the idea that yes, storms are disruptive and storms can cause damage. And yet there's this energy of like, you are held and there is this, you know, weathering the storm because change, great, we need change. Well, what is that? What does it look like to actually experience change and to go through it? It is, it's uncertain, it's unbalanced, it's it's, you know, tumultuous, it's, it's all the things. And so we're in the midst of that. And yeah, there's a lot of reason for us to just bury our head and feel like we're, you know, so this is an energy of trapped in fear. And so freeing ourselves from the fear, knowing that on the other side, there's hope, there's reason for recognizing that this is all serving, you know, and that all the things that are coming to pass are all a part of that story that we are collectively writing in real time, you know? So this is about tapping into these things to, to really do that from as conscious a place as we can and with as high frequency as we can with, with seeing things from the biggest, um, widest perspectives as possible, you know? So it can feel very difficult to get there, but this is giving us this view of what's possible. Absolutely. And this is where, you know, technically we can now look at the card and see them as a one message from universe or whatever you call it, that yes, you know, there is all the shadow of human consciousness coming up to the surface because this is the result of how we have lived for all these lifetimes. Because, you know, like even like, yes, as we keep saying, the ancestor healing and the inner child healing or wounding, well, first is the wounding, right? It is all connected, but we were our ancestors. This is not the first time in a rodeo, you know, like, okay, yes, there are exceptions. Now let's not generalize. There are some exceptions where there are some souls that are first time here on planet Earth, but I would say majority of us have been here before. Uh, so for majority of us, we had play a role in co-creation of this totality of what we can see right now, right here, right now, we play the role, even though it's not the role that I play right now. Yeah, I can say like whatever label I want, I'm a light worker, whatever, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't always the case. So, you know, I was some of the people for sure at some point throughout the centuries or millennia that contributed to creating this, what I'm now experiencing from this different vantage point, from this maybe a different angle, whatever. But that's what I mean when people, Oh, I mean, myself included, when sometimes we just want to wash our hands over it and say, oh, nothing to do with me. I didn't create that, you know, I was just born and stuff. But but there was a version of me sometime in the past as a part of the ancestor lineage and part of the collective consciousness that co-created that at the time. And that was what was needed at the time for us to learn whatever we were learning at the time. You know, there is no judgment. Um and then, you know, so when we look at the cards as a totality, yes, we have the totality of manifestation of everything that came before to bring out the shadows, the shadows so that it can invite the light because we can see how the guard, card is dark and how is light. Because when there is a shadow, there is always a light. And when there is a light, there is always shadow because that's how it operates here at the moment. And, and we lost in these thoughts because it's the swords are the thoughts that all, all we can see and being in despair is what the brain as the software identifies, which is like I say, it's based on the past. It's the archive of the past. So, and this is all serving the purpose for us to go beyond, 
because otherwise, yeah, otherwise we feel we're in a prison, we cannot move on from here. If this is the only way we're going to perceive the reality we're experiencing now, then that's it. Yeah, we really are in a prison. We cannot go any further. We need to go beyond that because if you just look at life through this three-dimensional human perspective, it's very limiting. But the, it's not who you are. You are not limited. It's just how the brain as the software identifies the reality. And it's got its function. And this is where, as we've been saying for videos, many videos, the heart, the higher self, wants to come online and we're going to get to it through the inner child because that's the guardian of the heart so it's all yeah. coming together yeah it really is and i think that you know some important things there is to say you know sort of stating these things is understood and saying well there's no judgment but understanding that some people may not have that awareness and so yes if you are living under a shroud of judgment and fear and criticism then it does feel like that. And it looks like that. And you see evidence of that wherever you look. And so there is this, again, new dawn that comes in on the other side of that darkest night, you know, this energy that illuminates, perhaps for you, new awarenesses and new perspectives that you did not see before. But it's in this energy of um, just, again, not with judgment, not with regrets or for going back over things in a sense that has us just spinning our wheels and recreating more of the same, but really sort of creating that like um, catapult or that jump start off of that track and putting us onto a new track that now, you know, there's this energy of illumination and hope and renewal and healing and what is possible that we can see, you know, tip, traditionally you'll see the star like out in the distance that we're looking at, but here it's being held in the hand. Mm. So once again, it kind of brings us into what we were saying initially about all this that's coming in um, energetically that's out there in the ethers that actually now comes into our hands and being held in this form that we can actually materialize and make a reality, a new story, a new season you know, of that episode, of that, of that show, <laughs> like, let's, let's create our next season of this show. Right. You know, we've got, we've done this one already. We played out all those episodes. It's time for that new season. So it does feel like it's definitely bringing in that energy for sure. And that is the Uranus Jupiter conjunction. The season is finished. It's finished because Jupiter Uranus conjunction are going to start a new cycle between the two of them. And the last conjunction happened in Aries. So this was already decided long time ago, 12, yeah. 13 years ago. So it's like, it's just because it's here right now and it's like in a bright daylight and we cannot escape it anymore because it's like, well, you know, there's going to be something going on uh, everywhere. And so, like you said, the eclipse, yeah, well, maybe we're just going to see it here in America and Mexico, you know, whatever. But the impact of the eclipse is going to be everywhere. So, you know, we all going to get impacted in one way or another, which, you know, we don't know just yet because it's a new moon dark we don't know we don't see but how else from the spiritual perspective from the higher perspective how else would be be guided or pushed or pulled kicking screaming to go back within and find the strength and power and the connection your direct line to you know that whatever all there is you know let's just not put label on it the all there is how else would you do it if the outside world didn't get crazier or bonkier or you know or more challenging people would just still go externally looking for the external but the only way actually how we just go like uh, we were saying you know you just go floppy and you just surrender and go like well there's nowhere else to go there is nowhere else to go it's just to go within i need to find the strength within the power within well, and this is why all these things are happening, because this is the tool that is necessary for the Aquarian age. The star goes in opposition with the strength card. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is why we have so many disruptions this year and unexpected things like, yeah, earthquakes and whatever else is going to be happening this year. Because when the world outside of us makes no sense and makes us feel so unsafe and insecure, where else do, are you going to find a sense of safety and security? Well, in the only place where it's always been, because the reality we are experiencing is created from inside out, not outside in. The outside in is just the feedback. It's just the mirror. 
So how else are we going to create a different reality? Well, we need to start from within. So this is why these energies are happening, to push us back inside, to reconnect, so that a new reality can be created from the place of heart, from a different point of view, not from the just brain, from the ego, because the ego only knows what already happens. That's why it's scared of the unknown, which is why, you know, we need both higher mind and a human mind, higher self and the human cells. This is how we're going to create the magic, because that creating a reality from just the human point of view of ego is maxed out. It's finished. It's maxed out. We're not going any further with that, even though we don't have ten of swords yet. Um, but that's it. So, so this is what is necessary, what is needed, even though it's not going to be easy necessarily, and it's not going to be uh, comfortable. But there is no other way. It's the, it's the, it's the labor pains. Like whoever had a child and say, oh yeah, it was a breeze, it was easy. I mean, you birth four. You can probably talk about that. I didn't birth any in this life, but it's not like that. So this is literally what's happening. It's messy. It is. It is messy. But every birth is different too, though. So everything that you expect and everything that you can read in a book or everything that you hear from other people's perspectives, it's always different, you know? So it, it is an interesting analogy for this idea of like, yes, we each experience it uniquely and from our own perspectives and our unique experiences. And so that's why we bring together such a holistic, you know, of all the different perspectives that come together. And so to the extent that we've been seeing it from such a limited point of view of only what's outside my front door and what I can see right immediately in front of me and nothing else matters. That's the wake up call that many people are getting, you know, and again, wherever you are on that spectrum and how you're perceiving it is going to set the groundwork for the way you experience this, whether it's a happy surprise or it's one that is quite disruptive or sh comes shocking to you. Now, likely if you're tuning in here, you're already utilizing these tools and, and, and opening yourself up to consider, to allow different perspectives and things to come in that can help inform you in a way that you then take down through your own personal truth detector, you know, filter it down, not just the head and analyze it there, but through the heart into the gut, you know, how does that feel within me? And, you know, start approaching anything that comes into your awareness that way versus just taking things as they were handed out, you know, which takes us back to this repeat cycle over and over again. So, many different angles coming in here to illuminate, mm -hmm. you know, ways that you can arrive at these changes. But it is, I feel when you were describing, it, it was reminding me of like a record, you know, taking that one back, but a record player. Okay. Old time. <laughs> like, but they would skip like, especially yeah. like a debris or a scratch on the record. You know, it has these, I don't, I don't even understand how a record works. I don't know how it works, but it does the needle and it goes around and it plays music. Right. And so if it hit and it would skip and it would jump. And I feel like that's kind of what we're experiencing is that, yeah, around and around we go and around and around, but you know, we're getting sort of catapulted. And a lot of times I'll say <laughs> with like the tower card, where you'll see people sort of catapult, like coming off of this building and there's all this, you know, lightning striking and everything that looks like by force. What if you leap? What if you take the step? You know, what if you utilize all of these things to help you have a, have a, you know, like I've said before, you know, even just surrendering and allowing is an action. It is taking an action. You're making the choice to allow. I'm not going to resist. I'm not going to push back. I'm not going to bury my head in the sand and check out. I'm I'm going to be present. I'm going to be I'm going to seek this out. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to stay open and see what happens. Allow, you know, just see see where it goes from there. So I just there's so much yet to be um sorted, you know, like we're at this point where we know it's coming. Those of us that are tuned in for sure can feel like those energies building, but like we said, even just in the immediate downloads and what comes forward even then we're still the reverberations and the things to come in the months ahead will be quite telling absolutely and i was just like you know when you were talking about the tower card the one before is devil isn't it because tower is 16 and devil is 15 right mm -hmm. so isn't that interesting because you might just go oh i don't know how this happened i don't know how this i don't know men left me or something well there are always signs 
because the devil comes before so it's like oh there are always signs we always know we in a in a deep down we know so even like when we look at the like world as whole uh, there have been signs long time i mean you know we know that these things are not going to you know be in place this way exact for much longer because they now, they are not necessarily getting better, right? So we have the signs, and this is why I feel that it's so profound that Mercury is retrograde throughout this entire time. You know, like right after full moon in Libra, because yeah, you don't need to reevaluate that anymore. You have the totality of understanding where the imbalance lies. You don't need to worry about that. And let's go to airy season, get ready for all this, you know, the North Node, uh, the Sun conjunction. Venus, of course, is conjuncting today. Um, what is Venus doing? Neptune. Venus, Neptune, then we have Sun, North Node, then we have Venus moving into Aries, and then, of course, in the meanwhile, we have Eclipse and uh, uh, Mars, Saturn, and uh, Mercury again, uh, Chiron, so all this. So this is why Mercury is retrograde, and it's going to actually be retrograde also for the next lunation, the full moon in Scorpio. Scorpio! Self-empowerment, right? So this is why Mercury is retrograde, because it's forcing us to ask questions. Because the signs always been there, we just didn't see or didn't look, but now they're right in our face. We cannot even see, we can't see them anymore. They're like so, so there. So it's, yeah, the, yeah. it's the shadow that's illuminated, you know? So yeah, so that's why Mercury is retrograde in Aries, because it's saying to get out of this mess, we need to start thinking about things in a different way. And for that, we need to ask questions, open, like honest, open-ended questions. And again, as much as possible with no judgment, which, you know, like I, like what I'm feeling as you're describing these things and I'm just like, yeah, 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 I know, I know. But I'm thinking like, how many people don't know that? <laughs> like, didn't get that memo. So even just the coming to that realization is shocking, can be shocked. I could see where that is shocking. That is, wow. I, wow. Now that I see that, I can't unsee it, right? Like now I've seen it. And it is sort of like that wake up, it's a wake up call, but even just in terms of like energetically, it's an energetic wake up call. It doesn't even, it, it's in your perspective, it's in your vision, it's in your um, understanding. It's not even like a, a physical event per se. The physical mm -hmm. events are just mirroring back to us what, what needs to happen within our own bodies, right? So it's like, there's so much there that it's just like, yeah, everything that, you know, the lunar eclipse where the earth is coming between the sun and the moon is us. We are the body. It's the body. And so it represents like, well, what, what is blocking us within us? How, in what way are we blocking, you know? And so that's what we've sort of, we're moving through and we're going back over and all these things are coming up in our relationships and all the things that that Libra energy brings. And now we have the, you know, Mercury retrograde go, whoa, whoa wait, take it back again. Like the record is still, you know, taking us back over and it's just, you know, and we're using this as a way to explain this energy, but yeah, I think that for like so many people that are here, you know, that's, that's where the jolt can come in and these ahas, which again, it doesn't have to be something that's traumatic, but it's illuminating. There's this, you know, to go, I, I can like, just see like the way that it's coming across, you know, and how it yeah. gradually yeah. Like gets bigger. And then it's like, boom, it's here. It's in your hands. Like, oh, I didn't know I had that the whole time. Like, yeah, yeah, that was so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, literally. And this is why I feel, you know, because if you think about it, you know, if you really want to go there, if something really challenging happens to us in our life, well, you know, some people, if they can't cope with the emotion, they just go, okay, let's just, uh, you know, business as usual. Let's just go to work and, you know, like just distract ourselves. But it's always going to hit us in one, you know, at some point, you know, the emotion will want to come out. It will hit us at some point. Something else might happen, whatever. So let's just say you are the type of person who actually really get hit and say, you know, I need to take time off work. I really need to process this. You know, I really need to sit with this. I really need to feel these emotions. I really need to process this. Some people can't, you know, some people are not wired that way. They need, you know, they need to do things. But there are people who will just sit with the emotions. And then when we really sit with these things and sit in quiet and, uh, you know, be able to really reconnect and go through these waves of emotions and stuff, that's where a lot of these aha moments happen. Or so suddenly we see things differently or, you know, or like we have some kind of, awakening moment or whatever it is or like you know also when people are processing these things in many times they want to be alone 
So usually, you know, like, um, again, everybody's got their own coping mechanism. Some people just want to see the bottom of the bottle, which, you know, again, we are where we are at, but some people want to go to nature or sit in a garden or sit under the tree or look at the water, body of water, you know, ocean and stuff like that, which is very healing. Again, when we reconnect with the nature, where we are in that stillness, when we can hear our own, uh, you know, whatever it is, feelings, guidance, thoughts, whatever it is, then yeah, then usually that is the time where these big shifts happen in our life. You know, these big things that come to shake us awake, that's when the biggest, you know, people always look at these big things that happen in their life. They say, well, I was never the same person after that. I was never the same person. I cannot go back to who I was before. And now if we take it into the, you know, the 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 um, global scale, this is literally what's happening. So everybody can under, because most people, you know, especially if you are watching this, I assume you are over 21, uh, most people by that point lost someone, you know, even if just a grandma or great grandma or, you know, a puppy or whatever, like everybody lost something or someone that they cared about. So we had to go through these emotions and, you know, through these things. And then, you know, we became someone different because something changed, something altered in our reality. It was never the same again. So this is literally, if you take it into the um, global, into the you know stage of the, um, how do you say it? I can't think of the world, uh, of the words right now. You know, it's the individual collective, collective stage, yes. Uh, you know, so when we look at the collective stage, this is literally the same thing. It's just happening in a bigger scale, but it's literally the same thing. We will never be the same again, but yeah. who you're gonna become is up to you. Because, like, you know, the light, it's been here all along. You've been creating your reality all along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and can we see how that can be both daunting and really exciting? It can be both. It can be both. Like, the idea of, like, how do you completely shift an entire human collective consciousness? That sounds like a big task, <laughs> like a tall order, you know? But it's already been happening. It's already in progress. Whether you saw it or not, it was still happening. It is happening, right? So this is really about more and more parts of that collective whole illuminating and coming online and understanding and seeing these new vantage points and perspectives that can sound really overwhelming leading up to it. But typically once you see it and you know it, it's just like, oh, Oh gosh, I see that now, you know, like, wow, I did not see that before, but I see it now, you know, in this way that like, then you just continue. It's like the, the nature of our, our way of, of persisting, you know, that we will continue to do so. It just, you know, is likely going to look very different, maybe feel very different, but it just being all a part of, you know, these major shakeups that are happening, shakeups and wakeups, right. And just things that are, that are creating space for the new to be created. And so that's also about what do you, okay, this is like, you know, one of the things I was saying at the beginning of this year, the energy of eight and this year being highly potent for manifestation and abundance. So what do you want to magnify? What do I want to have amplified in this energy? That's this ticket right here. When you do cross over and we're all, we're all heading there. What do I want to have amplified in this energy? Do I want to be holding this energy, you know, or do I want to be in this, this perspective of bringing in all of what it is that I wish to manifest in my life and in this world and what I, what I would want it to look like, what are my wishes? And it's saying wish big, go big, you know, anything that could be possible is possible now. So really um, holding that, that's what you want to be holding when you're walking through these energies and experiencing them. Especially with Mars as the ruler of everything in Aries, is it, it, in Pisces. And I mean, Mars is going to conjunct Neptune right after the full moon in Scorpio before he moves into his sign of rulership, Aries, and Venus moves into the sign of her rulership, Taurus, that's going to be at the end of this month. But just being in the present moment, this is how we go beyond. You know, Jupiter is actually the traditional ruler of Pisces. Jupiter is going to conjunct Uranus. Uranus is like, just like, you know what you said? Well, how are you going to change the whole world? Sounds like a big task. Nothing Jupiter and Uranus can't handle, trust me. You know, Jupiter multiplies, you know, and Uranus is like, okay, <laughs> you know, 
let's put some big uh, tower moment in there or something. And this is not to, again, this is not to fear monger, to be afraid. But when we look at these energies from the highest possible frequency and vibration, it's like you literally could have your awakening in that moment, you know, because the Jupiter is this instant download of wisdom and knowledge, you know, or from like your ascended masters or your connection to yourself as the ascended master of the future, whatever. And Uranus can just bring it to you right here in a split second because Uranus, there is no separation between time and space. Remember, Uranus is the first planet we cannot see with naked eye. It goes beyond. It goes beyond Saturn. It goes beyond. It says that everything is possible. So this is where, yes, it could be daunting, but it's so excited at the, exciting at the same time because until this point, we lived in the Saturn space that we only see what we see. That's all there is. There's a table. Okay, that's all there is. You know, there's only a table here, right? Well, is it? That's only what we can perceive through the density, right? But, you know, there are so many things happening in this room that I cannot see with my eyes, with my three-dimensional eyes. So this is what we're talking about. This is the new series, the new series of the human um, collective. And this is where we're going. So we need to get over that, uh, you know, that hump which is saying that all, all there is is what we can see and what already happened and what we can identify and hear and smell and taste. You're much more than that. You are multidimensional. And now this son of the creation that person is holding with the star, it's saying, yeah, wish upon the star and wish big because Jupiter is just about to hit Uranus. You know, <laughs> everything is possible. And with Mars in Pisces, you know, the, the multiverse is the limit. Source is the limit. Pisces is everything. All there is. Yeah. I love it. I feel like we're pitching a new like Netflix special right now, you and I. And it's like, that is so last series. Oh, that's last season. Okay. So we're stepping into the new. So yeah, <laughs> see that, right. It's like, yeah, that's true. There's a whole story about that limited perspective and doom and gloom and all those things. And it, it has its place. And this all has been telling us from the beginning that it's coming into be balanced. And there's this shift happening in order for that balance. We have to recalibrate and bring it into alignment so it's having us go back into the past bringing those things up and again we, we've been saying this like lunation after lunation all of it like we're mining the gold we're extracting the goods we're bringing forward the best and we're leaving the rest like we're allowing ourselves to move into this new again what are we carrying there what's bringing what have we been dragging what's holding us back and slowing us down that we can release you know all of it so it's just really as always it just comes all together in this crazy way but you can't it's... make it up like which the universe like oh you want a message dun, 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 dun. pretty clear right <laughs> yeah and there's a million ways to interpret it of course but you know be here now in this moment and we're tuning into a particular frequency and we're allowing whatever comes up and we're just considering it allowing it to filter through again ultimately you are invited to step into your discerning self that comes from within. You know, this is where we, last time we met, you know, we had the feeling alone card with the lantern and we went, you know, off the, off the rails with all the things we were seeing there, but it's very similar. If you didn't notice, you know, the, the, the person that's in the center of all this, once again, it's right here within you. You've actually been holding it the whole time. Like, oh, geez, it's been so dark and cold. And I actually had this light right here, <laughs> you know, like, and we can make light of it, but why not? Like, this is full energy, right? We're going into some very significant things. That's the whole story of the fool's journey, moving through the major arcana, the big secrets, these major archetypes where there's all this significant stops along the way, but we're going into it with this lightheartedness so that we can be open to receive and pick up as we go and, and build and create from there. Well, yeah. that's why it's Aries. Aries is the child. It's literally mm -hmm. the child, the small child that is just like so excited to be here and like, oh, what else can we explore, you know? So yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Wow. All right. So with that, what do we think? Do we want to pull the our bonus card? Your final bonus card yeah we were feeling into what we wanted like an oracle deck that was going to bring us a message we're trusting that we were drawn into the oracle of awakening which is a beautiful deck it's uh, a perfect title 
perfect title. So we're, we're feeling, and this color scheme, I can't tell, you know, I just realized that meal from uh, the empowerment pack, like the turquoise and the, and the purple too. Like it's matchy, just so matchy. matchy, matchy. So uh, let's see what's going to come forward here from the Oracle of Awakening. So if you guys want to be in on a joke about the empowerment pack, you just need to join Marisa's empowerment pack for April. And then you will yeah. understand what we love in it. You are welcome. There's still time. We're in the first week of April, so I can definitely still bring a couple of, we're all playing the fool this month. That's the theme. Everybody <laughs> plays the fool. So I can take some more fools. Any other fools want to join us? You have a lifeboat. <laughs> we can bring them on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. One card. Ooh, I I mean, oh my gosh. Okay, so make sure you can see creation? it. Creation? Is it creation? It's creation. Wow. And these words are so perfect because it's what we're saying about this point that we're at: inception, genesis, genesis, and manifestation. So it looks just like the hope card, two hands holding the spiritual creation and the hope card is two hand, human hands holding the life. Yeah, it's but we're thing. here at this, this inception point, this, the genesis of the new, the new, you know, the new that has yet to be written. So there's really this energy of, and manifestation, it was giving me like magician, right? We're going to step into then taking the action um, at this point, you know, like I said, it's like this. The fire, the sparks, the impulses, all the energies that's coming in right now, we're best served to explore. We're exploring by moving through all of this, but then we're going to step into the action of mm -hmm. creating with that and manifesting that. So again, what do we want to manifest? What are we going to put in there? And what do we want to bring with us? And when we think of it from that terms, you know, it could be really clear what we don't want. Right. So we can already just again, that's where that lower vibrational stuff can just get cut right out. I don't want to bring in trapped in fear that doesn't have any place in this new that I want to create. So, you know, that really helps to put that into perspective, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's creation. Right. So make sure I have the right Oracle message. Does here. it have a number? It doesn't. That's why I wasn't sure. There's there's no numbers and there aren't page numbers. So I was. Well, that's you know, even better because in the future, we don't care about labels. <laughs> we don't care about numbers. We are not just a number. Yeah, we, we don't care about the labels. We're starting We're starting from that, that zero point. So the act of creation is a ritual, a direct alignment to your divine manifesting essence. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be changed, manipulated, encouraged, and molded into new and different forms. You are an aspect of the divine life force from which all are born. You are the micro macro. And as such, you have the power and ability of creation. You do it every day with each thought, action, and feeling you perpetuate your reality or create a new one. This card is asking you to pay attention to what you are putting out into the world. Pay attention also to what you are expecting from the world. Are you worried or excited about what the day will bring? Can you open up to an even more expansive mind state that may provide unexpected opportunities? There is so much potential and possibility outside of the known. Be intentional with your energy and frequency because it is always creating. I think there's a little more. This card may also be a sign that you have been waiting for, a positive omen to move forward on a project that you have been thinking about or working on. Let this card and the idea of creation inspire some contemplation of your own innate ability and power to create. Allow the ideas to flow. What would you like to bring forth into your experience? And finally, the affirmation I am creatively involved in the evolution of humanity. I am the creator of my inner and outer worlds. You can't make it up. We knew this was the perfect deck as soon as you told the title of it. And I mean, doesn't it look like a uh, like a new moon eclipse, the thing in the middle? You know, it's like the void. Yeah. It looks like an eclipse because it's black. 
yeah, it has that central black hole in the center, but coming from it is what looks like the stuff of the cosmos, you know, like, and it's like what you create from. It's the stuff of creation, you know, exactly. yeah, it's gorgeous because these cards are gorgeous, but it's beautiful. It's just what we said. <laughs> it literally is like literally like the universe cannot make it any clearer. Like, that's what I mean. If people look at these cards from the first to the last and what they represent, like, yes, totality of manifestation of what came in before. So we can see the shadow and we can see how the limited perception of reality created this. But now you have the power to create something completely different and you can create whatever you want. You know, like there is this whole universe, um, un unmanifested universe of power that is to our disposal to create whatever we want. And that is what is being mixed up, you know, like it's like, you know, and you see, I think it's one of the, I don't know if it's this psychic tarot or the other one, the magician, which he has this stuff in his hands, like this light, you know, and it's like, you know, you can see sometimes in these wizard movies where they like spin in the magic, you know, in their hands and then then they send it into the like, you know, it's like that. We spin in the magic right now. We, we creating it from the void, from the scratch, but because, you know, of the um, star, which is the card of healing and in opposition with the, strength which is the child you know the leo the inner child it needs to come from the heart place this part this time not from the thoughts from the heart place this is how we're going to create the different reality which takes us back to first card the masculine that has to be a balance between the masculine and feminine yeah which i feel like that's what i'm seeing with these two hands is it takes mm. both and yes. you have both the left hand the feminine the right hand, the masculine, right? We exactly. already were with us the whole time, but it's been out of alignment. It's been out of balance. And so in the experience of what it is to be out of balance, we've manifested all that came to this point. And so now with we get to now know what it is we didn't know then. So we have the benefit of wisdom and all the tools that we've picked up along the way so that as the record spins and we come back around again, we can create a whole new thing that's made up of all the stuff that we took from that experience. And we take the best and we leave the rest, you know, we, we release it and we let it go with love because it's all been serving, you know, and it's all a part of this fool's journey that we as a human collective have created. And we're starting a new chapter, a new season <laughs> coming soon, <laughs> you know, tune in. But it's, it is, it's coming in. And so it really is about being mindful and discerning about what am I going to take in my little fool's knapsack? What's coming with me? And that's the stuff that will make the magic that we are manifesting next. So um, I love it. I mean, it literally said, are you worried or are you excited? Right? We said that. Is it daunting or is it exciting? Well, I don't know little bit of both but you know we're gonna put in a little bit of this and a little bit of that because they're you know it's it's there's a there's a purpose to it coming to your attention that like oh this feels a little different it feels like something to pay attention you know and so I feel that because I feel that twinge of worry concern unknown and how that makes me feel and that's okay utilize that as the tool that it is but don't sit in it don't be trapped in it don't just stay in it that's not serving. And you, when you really allow yourself to just consider that and feel that from just a different perspective, you, you start to see that and understand how it's, it's not serving to continue to stir that same old stuff around. So. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking about like my three-year-old nephew, but because you know, these children, they are so truth telling, at least at that age. And you ask him, like, you know, what he's afraid of, and he'll tell you, you know, or you ask him, are you afraid of this? And you say, yes, you know, he's not going to lie about it. He's just going to be upfront. But then he's going to ask you 100,000 questions, like, to understand that thing he's worried about, because he's trying to, you know, shine the light to it. He's trying to not be afraid. So just like you said, you know, like, yeah, are we worried? Of course we are worried. We're humans. You know, we still have a human experience. You see something that is like, you know, threatening your life. You're going to be worried, you know, otherwise, like, are you crazy or what? But then at the same time, the higher self is not worried, but we need to bring the two into the balance. But by actually admitting to yourself that, okay, I'm not hiding for it. Yeah, this is concerning, but what I'm going to do about it, because if I hide from it, then I cannot change it. 
because I try to pretend it's not there, right? So this is like, you know, what we've been saying many times, like for anything to change, we need to be aware of it. We need to see like, okay, yeah, I accept it's there. Well, it's there. I can see it clearly or I'm feeling the feels and then, you know, I'm aware of that. And now what, what can I do about it? But, you know, so that's why, that's why these things are becoming very <laughs> aware <laughs> to us. Yeah, you have to feel the weight of it in order to have it perhaps come into your awareness. If that's the path that you, you know, yeah, in some cases there's seekers and those who have been, you know, kind of bringing that in. But for the majority of people, it it the, the wake up, the shake up is in the like, hmm, I'm getting a little uncomfortable. Like I'm feeling a little something. And that's what drives me to look outside of this perspective that I've been in. So it's serving. And so again, now that you have that inside scoop, what are you going to do with that? You know, and that's where we have the opportunity to then make, you know, uh, decisions from that discerning place that says, hmm, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take the leap. I'm not going to wait to be catapulted off or to go kicking and screaming. I could, that's a choice. That's an option of mine. But as for me, I think I want to, I want to be actively engaged in this process and, and contribute, you know, what I have to bring into creation. Well, because it's kind of like, you know, if you if you are the last one in the queue, you know, that you don't want to go, you don't want to go, then, then, you know, at the end, you will have no choice, but that which you can choose from will be less. Whereas mm -hmm. all these people like that go ahead of you, perhaps they have more things to pick up, more things to choose from. And then, you know, like, but everything is perfect. You know, that's the thing. Everything always turns out to be exactly as it's meant to be. But yeah, I'm just, you know, I don't even know what else to say. I think all these cards are just speaking for themselves. <laughs> They are. I think we have definitely said it. And um, I'm, I'm excited to meet next time on the other side for episode 20. Right. We're going to we're going to meet next and, and and be on the other side of this eclipse season and uh, into this uh, Scorpio full moon. Right. So is that the next right, time? Exactly. And that will be my last one from Mexico, because after that, I'll be traveling. So oh, yeah, that'll be the grand finale. Our May, May episodes will be shot from Europe. <laughs> Coming from another location. <laughs> there we go. Okay, me, perfect. <laughs> so I think we maxed it out, didn't we? We did. Okay, perfect. So Marisa, please tell us what's new on the menu. Well, like I said, you know, same time, same station. It's the beginning of a new month. We have the empowerment pack and it's really a great way for us to tap into everything that's happening. So if you want to jump in, there's three readings throughout the month, which will start with this month ahead energy that I'll share with you and then pull your personal cards. And then there'll be a reading for this upcoming lunation and the second one later in the month. Um, so that's probably like my best you know, way to connect at this point. But at any time, if you just want a single reading, including one just for the eclipse or or anything, um, just to check in, um, I have a hello empowerment reading that's available too. Cool. And I heard a little bird, you still have this uh, inner child and ancestor healing. And also still, of course, we are in a spring or autumn, wherever you are in the world, there is also still the equinox in action. So. You're right. That little bird was correct. Yes, there's actually a lot of uh, the link that's um, shared will be uh, to all of my spring uh, seasonal specials, which include there are some goodies in there with the uh, inner child and ancestral healing and yeah, whatever, whatever speaks to you, but always reach out if you're interested um, to know more. And uh, the share cast my empowerment share cast it's free. Um, it's tucked away from social media. So it's just, you know, my ability to connect most authentically there. I offer some free card polls and other goodies there too. So that's a great way just to get your, dip your toe into empowered tarot. Thank Excellent. You. And we'll put all the links in the descriptions. So that's where you find them. And yeah, to connect with me, you just find me on social media or my website, moonlightsoul369.com. And yeah, and we can chat further, but uh, I have to say so majority of my appointments for this month are already gone <laughs> because I'll be preparing for my relocation. So very likely you're going to get a slot in May. So. so that's that's exclusive whatever's left to some people in certain time zones, I would think, because there's more once you're in a different time zone, maybe the options could be more limited. So if you have just a few little exclusive spaces left, that might be desired by people who are in certain time zones, I would guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends. Whatever people, whatever works for people. You work with everybody. So I, I, I will be a bit limited with the, what I can offer, but you know, we can always yeah. work it out somehow. 
Cool. So thank you again, Marisa. Always a pleasure. This was exciting. Yes, thank Just you. As expected. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.